Today, in a show of unity, the boomers and the millennials work together. We're gonna to combine an old school carbureted 671 supercharger with a modern stroker LS motor. That's right, LS, roots blower, working together. Let's check it out. In this video, we're gonna combine some boomer boost with some modern LS technology, and hopefully they're gonna to work together and we're gonna be one big happy family because we all should be. The reality is that the performance industry is one very small community compared to everything else that's out there. We should all be sticking together. We should all be helping each other. But in this video, what I'm going to do is take a 671 root supercharger with two carburetors. I'm going to install it on a 383 LS stroker. So we'll go through the whole buildup of the LS stroker. I ran it with multiple intakes and we're going to go over why I did that. Then we're going to install the root supercharger and we're going to talk about how much power it made and how much boost and all kinds of good stuff. But before we do that, we need to dispel the myth that boomers and millennials can't work together. Before we get to our test, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between boomers and millennials and let you guys in on a little secret. The reality is you guys are actually the same people. Now I can hear the Turbo LS guys all up in arms, oh, I'm not a boomer. <laughs> That's a name that they apply to anybody that doesn't have the same thing that they have that could be the only way to make power in. Anything else is dumb and anybody else that doesn't agree with that obviously is a boomer. The reality is please look it up on the internet. Do Use the internet for something other than looking at cat videos or UFOs or whatever else you're using it for. Look up the word boomer. A big Baby boomer is a, is, a, is a designation applied to a specific group of people during a specific time and not to everybody that disagrees with you. But I digress. Take a look at the guys that were making performance modifications back in the 60s and early 70s during the original muscle car area. Th that time represented a big step up in performance compared to the stuff that came before them. And the guys that were hopping up cars in the 50s and in the 40s represented a big step up in performance from the stuff that came before them. Heck, the guys that were modifying flatheads, that was a big step up in performance from stuff that came before them. And guys that are modifying motors now, turbo LSs from the wrecking yard or whatever, you've just enjoyed being born at a time when you can use the current technology to make the kind of power that you're making. But it's no different than everybody else. Because let me clue you in on a little secret. First of all, two things. One, what you're doing is not the only great way to do stuff. A Turbo LS, you're not going to find a bigger fan of Turbo Junkyard LS stuff than me. You're not going to find many guys that have done more testing on it than I have. I love it and I'm all in on it. But I also recognize something very important. It's not the only way to go. I will get guys that will argue that, oh, if you don't have a Turbo LS, you're an idiot. Everything else is just dumb. It's the cheapest, least expensive, most powerful way to go. That's fantastic and I like that you're enthusiastic about it. But the reality is that shouldn't be the only thing that's cool because it's not. A 1971 Hemi Cuda is ultra cool. So is an LS6 Chevelle. So is a 69 Camaro or a Boss 302. Those cars are awesome. A modern version of that car is awesome because it has modern drivetrain and it allows you to go a lot faster, although they have gained a lot of weight. The other thing you need to recognize is the fact that even though you're right now in time and you're making turbo LS power, you're going tens or nines or eights or whatever you're doing, the reality is that future generations are going to look back at you the same way that you're looking back at the boomers of the world. <laughs> Guys with like advanced technology, traction control, four-wheel drive, and electric motors, they're going to laugh at the fact that you had to put a sloppy stage two cam and a turbo and get your peak uh, boost or peak, get your peak torque to happen at 4,800 RPM. That's just ridiculous. The torque, the maximum torque on my electric motor happens at zero RPM. So what do you wait for you? That's why I put seven car lengths on you when we took off from a stoplight. They're going to be laughing at you and calling you boomers too. So just recognize that fact. Also recognize the fact that a turbo LS or an LT or whatever it is you're doing or a coyote, it's not the only way to make power. There's lots and lots of cool stuff. I have an RB25 sitting at West Tech that I'm so excited about testing because there's not not a lot of really good, valid, detailed back-to-back -back information on that. I want to do distribution stuff in different turbos and different exhaust manifolds and cams and headers. The same thing I do with all the other stuff. But I love that as much as I love a Buick 455 or obviously an inline 292-inch inline six-cylinder Chevy. There's lots and lots of good stuff. So recognize the fact that if you're a millennial, you're basically a boomer. You're just at a different time and guys are going to be laughing at you. Let's get to our test. Because we were installing an OG 671 root style Mad Max supercharger on this combination, I wanted to go ahead and make an old school displacement out of this LS, you know, more like a Gen 1, uh, Gen 1 small block Chevy. 
So we decided to make the LS a 383, which is a very common displacement used on the Gen 1 small block stuff. So to make a 383 out of the LS, we bored this thing out to a 3905 bore, which is an overbore size for the factory 5.7 liter LS1. And then we combined that overbore with a four inch steel stroker crank from Speedmaster. It was a 4340 forged steel crank and the combination of the four inch stroke and the 3905 bore produced 383 cubic inches. Now, in addition to the forged crank, we also had forged rods and forged pistons. The rods came from K1, they were a 6125 rod, and we had a forged piston from Wisco. So basically, the bottom end was <laughs> super stout and capable of withstanding anything that that 671 could dish out, which is a good thing. We could also use this combination later on for turbos and all kinds of testing. To get this 383 to make power in addition to the displacement, we also added a healthy camshaft. In this case, it was a crane cam 624 lift, 224, 232 degree duration split, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. It's a good cam for the 383. It would have good driving manners. It would have good idle quality, especially on the bigger 383. We've used this camshaft on smaller 4.8s and 5.3s, and while it's a fairly good bit of camshaft for a 4.8 and a 5.3, it works really, really well on a 383, even on a street driver. Now, to help this thing make power, the 383 obviously needed good cylinder heads, and we installed exactly that. We installed a set of trick flow 225 heads. Now, take a look at the big cylinder head, cathedral port cylinder head shootout test that I did, the video that's up, and you can see that there are a lot of good cylinder head choices, including these 225s, but you could also use properly ported 706 heads or properly ported um, 243 heads, although the thing I'll have to say about using an aftermarket set of heads like these trick flow 225s is that the deck thickness on the head is much thicker than a factory head. The factory head was not designed for this kind of high boost stuff, uh, especially for the kind of thing that guys are doing with turbos. We didn't run a lot of boost on this blower, but the deck thickness is important, especially if you go up and boost. So the aftermarket heads, in addition to flowing well and working well, they also have a thicker deck. So that's something to consider if you're talking about running lots of power. So to top the heads off, we installed first an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake and a Holley 950 Ultra XP carburetor. We also ran a set of engine 7 8 headers the reason that I chose this single plane carbureted intake is because the intake manifold run on the 671 supercharger from Speedmaster that we're going to put on is a short runner intake. So I wanted to compare a short runner NA intake to the short runner boosted intake so we can kind of get an idea. Now I couldn't run the Speedmaster blower intake manifold NA unless I built some kind of box and I, I really didn't want to do that. So this was the next best thing. But what I also did is after running this Victor Jr. intake, I installed a fast LSXR intake manifold to show you how much extra power is available with longer runners, with the proper runners for this kind of RPM range. Because that's that's what happens is basically intake manifolds are tuned for RPM range. And you can see what the difference between this carbureted short runner Victor Jr. intake and the fast intake is. And had we, if we were able to, even the supercharged application that has immediate boost response from the roof floor would pick up a lot of power if somehow you could package the blower and an intercooler <laughs> and a long runner intake. If you could package all that, it would be a good combination. But here's what happened when we ran our carbureted combination with the Victor Jr. and the 950 carburetor. Everything was dialed in. We did jetting. We did timing sweeps. And after we were all done with that, this combination, this 383, produced 526 horsepower and 496 foot-pounds of torque. But here's what happened after we installed... Sorry about that, I had to stop the video for <laughs> real quick. But here's what happened after we installed the fast LSXR intake manifold. So you can see that the fast manifold not only made more peak power, when it pushed our peak power up to 548 horsepower, peak torque was also up to 503 foot-pounds. But basically, it improved the power output everywhere. And if you take a look at the big intake shootout test that I did with all the cathedral port intake manifolds, I ran on the 6 liter, we ran a Victor Jr., we ran a Fast, and as you can see, the Fast is just, it's just a better combination for a, a, an engine combination, or a better intake manifold for a combination that's running to 6,500 or even to 7,000 RPM. The long runners just work well and allow the thing to make really good power. So now let's find out what happened after we installed the supercharger. After running our OG 383 LS combination, both with the Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake and 950 carburetor, and then with the fast 
LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body, it was time to add boost. And in this case, boost came from a 671 supercharger kit supplied by Speedmaster. Speedmaster supplied all of the components for the kit. It was pretty complete. It included a billet intake manifold and all the pulleys that we needed to adjust the boost level. And it also came with a 671 supercharger from the blower shop. And we know that those guys know a thing or two about making power. And this was a polished unit, so it looked awesome. And it was plenty capable of making lots of power. And as a matter of fact, quite a bit more than we made here. But here's what happened after we installed the 671 supercharger. Power output jumped to 753 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 625 foot-pounds. And this was at a peak boost of only 7.3 pounds. So we weren't even pushing this thing. In fact, if you guys want, and I think I'm going to do it anyway, but let me know in the comments that you want to see it. Um, I ran this the same 671 with a number of different kits. We ran it on also a small block, a couple of different big blocks. So I'm going to do a video called 671 versus the world so I can show you the, that this same 671 671 makes a variety of different power levels and different boost levels with a bunch of different engine families, but it's basically the same blower. So it's kind of cool. So run on this, you know, we ran this kind of as a mild application. The 671 for our 383 in true OG form was equipped with dual carburetors. In this case, it was two 950 Ultra XP Holly carburetors, more than enough carburation. As a matter of fact, you could probably make this kind of power on a single 950 because we know we know we've done that before. But two 950s obviously gives good distribution, plenty of airflow, and you're not going to hurt anything by having you know those carburetors on this 671 supercharger. This was a good combination. You know, it's kind of cool. It's got presence. It's 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 a polished intake manifold. You're running it on an LS, so you have good cylinder heads, and the, you know we got enough camshaft and stuff. Obviously, there's a lot more power to be had. We could go with more camshaft. We could go with a lot more blower speed. And this thing's capable of making, as we've seen on a big block combination, this thing's capable of making near a thousand horsepower when it's really twisted up on the right combination. So we weren't anywhere near the maximum, but it's kind of cool. It's got a lot of torque. You can see it's over 600 foot pounds from you know, 4,500, basically all the way out past 6,500. So you're, you're never going to have a shortage of grunt there with a 671. Plus, you know, it sticks out of the hood. It's polished and it looks kind of cool. So let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did you think about our test comparing the <laughs> 671 supercharger and the two different forms of induction system on our 383 LS Stroker, good combination of old school meets new school and the way that I want the boomers and the millennials to realize that they're the same person I know is a little bit preachy, but I really like that. I get comments all the time from guys from Russia working on whatever they're working on, a Trabant or whatever it is. That's awesome. Whatever they have, I want them to make it faster. Guys in Australia, super enthusiastic. Definitely car guys there. Guys down in Brazil, guys in Canada, guys in Kentucky, guys in California. I don't care where you're from. What I want you to do is whatever you have, I want you to make it better and however we do that I'm gonna help show you what works and I also want you to realize we are a small group the the performance industry the aftermarket guys the guys that are actually modifying cars whatever kind of car it is is actually a very tiny fraction of the population in fact it's a very tiny fraction of the people that buy cars most people buy cars and use them as toasters they're disposable things they get in them it takes them from one place to another they use it as a status symbol but they're definitely not lifting the hood they're definitely not, mod not modifying them. so all of us guys that are our and gals that are are doing that we need to stick together and help each other <laughs> i'm richard from the guys thanks for watching make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell and i'll keep testing and maybe just a little bit of preaching